the United States will cease all implementation of the non-binding Paris Accord. The Paris Climate Accord is simply the latest example of Washington entering into an agreement that disadvantages the United States. Climate change is this global problem where emissions from all countries in the world affect all the other countries. It's important that countries kind of come together to, to work on this as a collective. And that's exactly what the Paris Agreement was trying to do. Under the Paris Agreement, countries sign up to make a voluntary pledge. They say, hey, this is what I think I can do. And countries around the world, 195 countries, signed up for the Paris Agreement and gave their own pledges. It was the first time we'd ever had anything like this. Compliance with the terms of the Paris Accord could cost America as much as 2.7 million lost jobs. It is time to put Youngstown, Ohio, Detroit, Michigan, and Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, along with many, many other locations within our great country, before Paris, France. It's really not necessary to withdraw from the agreement. Uh, if we decide that our commitment, our original commitment was too ambitious, we can simply change it. Uh, it doesn't have to be renegotiated. It wasn't negotiated in the first place. The nations who are the biggest emitters should lead on this. The United States is already viewed around the world by other countries, our allies and adversaries alike, as kind of a global scoff law. And they don't particularly care whether or not the United States is in or out. China and India and Europe are all taking important measures. India, as I said, is exceeding its Paris targets. China has one of the world's most impressive goals of carbon neutral by 2060 for the world's largest source of greenhouse gases. And Europe has already set a net zero goal of 2050. Climate change is one of the most important challenge for us uh, as European Union. The United States is lagging horribly. The United States has demonstrated that it can never be trusted wholly as a partner again. Even if we have a, you know, inspiring, committed leader, I expect that the U.S. will tread very carefully in balancing humility as it re-enters the global stage, but quickly rediscovering its international leadership because there are some things only the U.S. can do. We're kind of a wealthy country with a large technological and, and you know, great scientific enterprise kind of within the country. Um, and these are things that we can draw on um, to really lead the way in terms of crafting this new low carbon economy. And so there's a lot of benefit to be had by the U.S. taking a leadership role on this. And, you know, the, the contributions of the U.S. To, to global greenhouse gas emissions are not negligible. When the leading emitters set ambitious goals, that raises the bar uh, for everybody else. But simply demonstrating ambition and developing uh, the technologies and the policies which allow us to meet those ambitions will be very uh, helpful to other countries as well. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel and don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.